Hiya. Welcome to the ECY Shedcast, the wholly irregular ECY Shedcast, to give it its full title. Today, I thought I would bring you the glitz and glamour of the stockroom. By stockroom, I do mean my garage. Uh, it's a 1950s, I think, pretty sure, garage. So amazing that it's still intact. And it's one with uh, like concrete panels uh, and then a lovely asbestos roof, which is freezing in winter and absolutely roasting in summer because it's literally like a radiator. Like you put your hand up, you can feel it radiating heat. So uh, delightful, but um, it's a lovely big space. It's mostly dry. Um, it should be a bit drier this coming winter uh, because we've been working on, uh, well, I've been working on, um, I've sort of varnished um, the, the doorway, the wood and all that kind of thing to try and keep the damp out. Uh, we have nice new window frames. Um, I varnished that on the outside. I think I'd like to either paint or varnish it on the inside. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit spidery, which is very unfortunate for me because I'm scared of spiders. <laughs> uh, but it's quite a large space as garages go, and it does the job. In my wildest dreams, I would dearly love to replace it with a nice, lovely brick, little brick building maybe, or even a massive shed, like a, an actual massive wooden shed. But either way, I can't afford to because thanks to the asbestos roof, um, I can't actually really afford to have this disposed of, taken away, ripped down, whatever. So uh, this is what we've got. Um, actually, to be honest, when we were looking around at houses, because we rented before and um, my stock room in our old house was just a tiny upstairs bedroom. Oh, that was hard work. Um, so when we were looking for houses to buy our first house, it was tricky because obviously we had a tight budget but we were looking for somewhere that had a garage and it was surprisingly difficult to find a house that we could afford that had a garage or even to be honest like a garden big enough to put a big shed in um oh we looked at all sorts one of the ones we looked at <laughs> it was in otley and um the back garden was on a hill down towards the house and they had this like disgusting old shed um which was barely hanging together and they'd advertised it as having a shed um and this thing was barely hanging together and there was like a stream of rainwater running through it on the ground so oh we saw all sorts um so when we came here but to be honest we weren't planning to come to weatherby it was right on the edge of our search it was the very last house we were looking at and it was an evening appointment after we'd spent all day looking at houses and being disappointed by them and we very nearly didn't come and um and we thought oh god no we better just had to go and have a look and we came over and we just couldn't believe it it was just like this is perfect i mean it was a proper doer upper um but just perfect for the space and with having a garage the gar the, the garage this garage it was full of like um you know the 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 guy had been using it clearly for more than a couple of decades um to store the tools and everything which as you would expect um but like it had um he'd obviously repurposed old kitchen cupboards and they were like screwed into the walls but they were i mean the whole lot needed gutting um so that and that took quite a while um so it, it it took a bit of doing to get even as like spidery and um drafty as it is now it took quite a bit of doing to get it into this state um 
so yeah and it's it's far from perfect but it like i say it's quite a good big storage space and um and it does do the job um so yeah <laughs> that's that's the story the back story of of the ucy stockroom anyway we're in here today i just thought it would be a bit different and also it means that i can reach behind me and grab the boxes of yarn that i want to show you because there's quite a lot of them and it's quite a lot to shift it all through to the office and then shift it all back again and it's like 10 past six on a friday night and i just thought do you know what sod it i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go straight in the garage and i'm gonna film directly in there and um it's not glamorous but this is our reality this is what we're dealing with so there we go anyway it's also freezing today like what is that about hence the big cuddly cozy you can't do you know what i've got a step here Hang on. let's see if i can show you the rest of this uh, nearly oh there you go it's the front is just about down to my knees and it's got these pockets in which are completely useless well in my opinion completely useless um because if i put anything in them it's just going to weigh it down i don't know why i put pockets in i don't like po don't like pockets in knitwear i like pockets in everything else but probably an unpopular opinion not in knitwear it just weighs it down it's really annoying um I mean, I guess I could put stitch markers in, in there and they wouldn't weigh it down. But anyway, I don't know why I put pockets on. They're in the pattern. I, I think I just thought, well, maybe I'll follow the pattern as it's written for a change. Um, but anyway, I love this cardigan. So this cardigan, this is my kitchen cardigan. What that means is that since I finished making it, uh, what? I think, yeah, I have blocked it since i finished making it it has never made it any further into the house than the kitchen by that what i mean is it's never made it upstairs into the wardrobe because i keep it in the kitchen because i wear it such a lot and if i do take it off in a different room in the house i always make sure to take it back into the kitchen and it lives in the kitchen so i've always got it downstairs to hand so like the winter just gone because i made this i think last autumn winter just gone i was wearing this over other knitwear so like as my jumpers were getting thicker with the weather getting colder i was then putting this over the top as well oh so snuggly and warm but then over summer like now it i mean it's my watch says it's 17 degrees it is not 17 degrees it's like 12 um it's right there on the back of my kitchen chair and i can just pick it up and put it on so um the yarn that i used for this is boland lace held double with eldrick lace so boland lace is the blue face leicester lace weight and then eldrick lace is of course our um kid mohair and silk and i'll just give you a close-up it's got this lovely gentle mild sort of look and so the light in here we're on we're under strip lights so it's not the best but there is daylight the door's that way and there is daylight so um so this is gray really i'm not sure if that's it might look a bit green in this light and then this is hyssop so sort of how would you describe it a soft duck egg very very soft grayish teal anyway um but the fabric that it makes is so like it's really light and airy but it's it's warm and honestly I, I just can't even tell you i yeah it's like a hug but not a really tight one a gentle hug um so yeah <laughs> well talking of fluffy lace weight shall we um this past week just trying to think back over the past week so i spoke to you what was it a week last monday um and we were heading off to northeast wool show and then i did a quick video from northeast wool show as well so the show was amazing it was fantastic 
thank you to everyone who came. Um, you really, really made our weekend. We were just so chuffed to be there. It was really good. And our space was, was so good. Um, I, I'd said we could do up to a four by four metre space. Um, as in, like, that's how much stock we can fit in the car and roof box. Excuse me. Um, and when we got there, it was more like six by four. Um, I think the space was a lot bigger than anyone had expected. So that was really cool. We still ma obviously managed to fill it. We always do, because we always take far too much. Um, so that was really cool. We had loads of daylight, which is awesome. And it's often not the case. We had, we even had carpet, like nice clean carpet and actual plug sockets, like luxury, honestly, luxury. Um, so we were chuffed to bits. We had a fantastic weekend. Um, we saw some familiar faces, which is really nice. Um, we met a new uh, wholesale stockist who, well, I won't say anything now in case they decide not to, but if they do decide to, then I'll tell you who it was. Um, and that was cool. And lots of new people, new, lots of new um, to the brand. Um, you know, because I've been doing this for like 12 years, I, s I sort of forget that people maybe don't know that I dye the yarn and, you know, stuff like that. So we were getting loads of people going, oh, have you dyed this? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I've dyed it. And they're like, wow, that's amazing. You know, and it's kind of like, to me, because I've been doing it for a long time, it's just, that's just what I do, you know, and it's, it's my passion it, it it's yeah just like it's basically takes up my whole whole life so um yeah so that was really cool um yeah lots like i say lots of new people um i think you know we've had this gap of pretty much four years i mean we did uh unravel in september uh, weekend the queen died that was an interesting one. It was great, but it was a bit of a weird time. And then we did Yorkshire Yarn Festival in March. Um, but the gap in between that has basically been four years since Edinburgh 2019, um, you know, up until this year, really. And looking back, I think, I think it actually has taken me basically four years to recover from Edinburgh. Um, it was just something else. It was amazing. Like it was, it, it was an unbelievable experience, um, you know, and I wouldn't change it or swap it for anything. It, it, it was just out of this world and it won't happen again. It's, it, it's non-repeatable, um, even if just because of Brexit. But um, it was such a big thing, like, Organising that that stand that we had, I had spreadsheets. I even drew out my plan for the stand um, with where everything was going to go and, and, and everything and printed out copies for everybody that was coming to help me. So I had my staff and um, one of their husbands um, and, uh, and obviously Dave, my other half. Um, you know, and yeah, like I... I printed that out the information for them in advance so that hopefully setup would be that bit easier because I mean it took I don't know was it like eight hours and we still weren't done between like six of us um we took I think just over half a ton of yarn um because I don't do things by halves um we even took literally took the garden bench which was very, very cool. And people were sitting on it in front of our stand. That was so cool. Um, yeah, it was like, an, honestly, like a military operation. And it took, I'm not joking, months and months of planning. And, um, but as amazing as it was, the, the fallout from it, the mental burden, I just can't even like, yeah, I, I didn't think, sorry, that's just me um, moving. I, I, I didn't think much of it at the time. Yeah, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just got on with with work and everything. 
but then of course covid hit as well didn't it a year later and um you know we lived through like a really weird time and then on top of that bloody brexit hit and it, it just everything like it was like the bottom fell out of everything so as if i wasn't already burnt out when brexit hit honestly looking back it says a lot that all i could think about was how nice it would be to escape to like an, a remote island somewhere and just like i don't know not have to adult anymore and i was just like obsessing over somehow escaping which is just terrible i can't you know looking back i can't i just can't i can't believe it but you know you, you, your head goes to a funny place when things when things are tough doesn't it um just 2021 brexit honestly like i say it it was just like the the rug was pulled and and it's knowing that that will never really come back well maybe i don't know maybe in 10 years time or something if we ever manage to get back into the eu and get back into a, a single common market but for what it's worth i we're not going to go back really are we um we, could, we can try and rebuild but i don't think it'll ever quite be like it was before not not like i say maybe within the next decade or so anyway so um so there was that and then last year i don't even know where last year went honestly i just i just don't i think last year i was just so um tr still trying to deal with the fallout of everything and and the mental burden of it all that i just couldn't even think about doing shows and everyone else was getting back into shows and i was just i just couldn't i just i just really really couldn't and then um but we did end up doing unravel in september i can't remember how that came about um but yeah and, and i and i did enjoy it I did enjoy it um, but it didn't it didn't rekindle my enthusiasm maybe because it was a bit weird because the Queen died and all that kind of thing um, but it didn't quite rekindle my enthusiasm that wasn't until we went to Yorkshire Yarn Festival this March just gone when um, we were able to do it from home oh I'll tell you what about Unravel though as well <laughs> We got stuck there for a couple of extra nights because Dave, I think, sorry, I think I can hear a dog coming, because Dave was really ill. Um, oh, hello, little one. Hiya, have you had your dinner? Good girl. Oh, yes, was that good? Yeah, good girl. Sorry. Um, she, she's just looking at me. Um, yeah, Unravel, Dave was like horribly ill and we were stuck there for extra nights and it, it cost a small fortune because we had the van and all that kind of thing um so that was a bit of a weird one um but yeah and then we did a uh, yorkshire yarn festival in march and it was so close to home and it was such a great weekend and and again it was very civilized it was in a sports hall we had plug sockets it was all um i don't know it was just good and fun and and positive you know really positive experience oh i've got another dog now this is a big one oh yeah um and that was what rekindled my enthusiasm for getting back into shows but of course by march this year it's basically too late to apply for all of the rest of the shows this year um the thing with uh the northeast wolf show was because i'd emailed the organizer of um spring into wool that's at harewood house which is like 15 minutes away from here um and it is to my great shame that we haven't done it yet but like i say my mental health over the past it it's taken it has it's taken like four years to really try and get that back the energy back um so it isn't really deliberate that i've missed it and and i'm quite embarrassed that i've missed it with it being so close to home 
but yeah so i emailed him and said um could we possibly you know do you have a waiting list if any if anyone um drops out we would be able to be there in a heartbeat because we're local and blah 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 so he must have put me on a waiting list because we were then asked about Northeast Wool Show and that's how that came about um, and again a really really positive experience and I, I just feel so much better and more positive and more energised I'm really excited about doing loads of shows um, it will be exhausting but very excited um, it's just so good to get back out there um, I never thought well after February 2019 I really didn't think that I would get back to a point where I wanted to be doing shows again um, and I do I do so uh, it's just that's just really good anyway that was really long-winded sorry um, we do so we do have Yarndale at the end of September as well uh, I have another ultra on the 9th of September so two weeks before Yarndale um, it's another 32 mile one and it's just as hilly as the last one actually possibly slightly more hilly than the last one um, so that's now three weeks away and I am back training for that as usual no idea if I can do it um, but there's only one way to find out <laughs> might as well go and give it a go um oh excuse me because i'm hoping that next year well i'm going to apply for um the scottish yarn festival oh excuse me sorry i just ate an apple um uh scottish yarn yeah previously known as perth um i think what i've always wanted to do that one but it's always clashed really with yarndale um as in two shows in the same month that is too much um so that's why perth uh never happened so i'm, I'm gonna apply for that one and that will be my september thing hopefully if they'll have us never make any assumptions um for 2024 but that would mean that i wouldn't be able to do this ultra that i want to do it's very local it starts in otley which is like 40 minutes away at most um but that's the reason that I'm doing another ultra just six weeks after the previous one uh, so yeah I'll just uh, just have to give it a go uh, so where were we? so that's shows um, that's a very long story about shows wasn't it sorry um, so that brings us back to this week which also brings us back to fluff so we have done a massive update it went live i'm losing track it went live yesterday yesterday yeah yesterday <laughs> honestly i don't know where i'm coming or going um that went live yesterday so the fluff i just need to stop talking and show you the yarn um the fluff was now the lace which i have here ta-da Um, and so whereas this is a uh, kid mohair and silk two ply lace weight now the lace is a uh, baby alpaca two ply lace weight so I'll just get a skein out and then I can bring it up to the camera there you go and it is honestly I cannot tell you how cuddly soft this is I, I, I just the, words can't describe it on you have to feel it it's it's and it's soft in a different way to this um which sounds a bit nuts but it, it really is and if you have any of both you'll know what i mean um it's got slightly less yardage in it compared to the kid mohair silk because alpaca's a little bit of a denser fiber so you just get a bit less of it per 50 grams um what else can i tell you not a lot it's just so soft um debbie has a cumulus blouse by petite knit made in this uh which was two strands of it held double and it is to die for uh, my cumulus blouse is in eldrick lace two strands held double so we've got one of each between us which is pretty cool um 
uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> you need to honestly need to feel it to believe it. Um, and to another thing to my shame, I didn't realize it's two years since we did an update of this. That's really bad. Um, it's not deliberate. It's just uh, having a massive to-do list and loads and loads of bases. It's one of the reasons that I got rid of a few bases this year because much as I love them, and I do love all of them, but there were too many and it was just like, this to, this is too much. I, I, I think I'm better paring it down a bit and concentrating on the ones that we've got. So yeah, fluff. Oh, it's a fluffy. Um, so that's now the lace and I will not leave it to another two years before the next update. But it, do you know what? I've forgotten actually how nice it is. Um, so yeah, the other thing of note is that my Riverside Walks shawl uses, <coughs> excuse me, uses two skeins of Lowther Lace uh, plus five minis. It's an enormous shawl. I should have um, got it actually to show you. It's a huge shawl, but it's very light and fluffy. So it makes a really nice scarf and it kind of, you can wrap it around like at least two, three, maybe four times around your neck. Um, and uh, so it has plain sections of fluff and they're just broken up with uh, sort of stripes of lace in mini skeins. Um, have a look, you'll see what I mean. I'm probably not describing it very well. Um, so that's Riverside Walks Shawl. And I think it's probably one of our more expensive patterns. And the reason is that damn thing took so bloody long to edit and to get the pattern right. Honestly, I made really detailed and extensive notes knitting it up and, I, and the, obviously swatches and everything and it still took i can't tell you how much work that thing took we were sick of it by the time we were done um so yeah that is why it is priced as it's priced because a hell of a lot of work went into it probably way more than it will ever pay for in pattern sales but there we go lesson learned <laughs> so yeah what shall I show you next? Um, let's go for Rosedale four ply, shall we? This was popular at the Northwest, uh, Northeast wool show as well. Um, helps that it's sparkly. So we have two boxes and I'll show you them both. I'll just get them out individually. So this is box one. Hang on, there we go. That's box one. Um, some of this is sold. I'm, I'll be picking it for orders on Monday. Um, what shall I show you out of here? Oh, I've shown it you already, haven't I? I, show, I um, had it out in one of our, my shedcasts a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. Um, so I have, I have actually been through it already. It might be worth just looking back at that one. Um, what would it be? Maybe... Three shed casts ago, um, but I will show you. I will show you again in case you can't be bothered looking up an old shed cast, which is totally understandable. This is Delphinium. This is one of our variegated colourways. I don't know if you can how well you can see the sparkle. I can see it really well in this light, but I, it looks on screen like it's not sparkling all that much, or maybe it is. It's not garish though, the sparkle, it is quite subtle, which is good, it's nice. And it's gold, it's gold sparkle, I'm not sure if that's all that obvious. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, this is nice, Barn Door, which is like a mix of neutrals. And it does go very well with the shed doors. So uh, that's always good. It's good when it, when it matches what well, it's sort of supposed to match. Um, there's a nice zingy colour actually here. This is Calamondin. Admittedly, it's not my most popular colour, but I think it's really cool. 
uh, like a little bit of a zing. Not, it's not neon, but it is a little bit of a zing. So that's box one. Uh, I'll just grab box two for you. I know it's not as nice using these plastic boxes as the wooden boxes. I'd love to use the pretty wooden boxes, but do you know what? These are easy to manage. They are, um, you know, the, the lids are tight on them, so they're um, damp proof and quite spider proof. Not 100%, but um, I do have, luckily have people around me who are not scared of spiders. Um, but yeah, they um, they look after the yarn well. So I know that they're not like super pretty, but they are perfect for our needs. And you can do this. If you're picking an order, you can do that because the lids all fold up. So I can just grab, this is Keldaren by the way. I can just grab what I need. So that's why yeah, I use the less attractive option for yarn storage. Um, so here is box two. Look at that. Oh, these though, the summer, summery colours or to give you a bit of cheer in winter when it's dark and grey. Or if you like murky colours. Hello. That one is Pete. I'll show it you, hang on. Uh, there we go. Charcoal with a bit of brown mixed in, just to give it some subtle, um, kind of like a heathery look. So, and um, that's rather lovely. And then there's things like, just put that away nice and neat. Oh, crocus, gotta show you that so pretty with all the purples and pinks love it love it honestly i had way too much fun dying these updates up way too much i could have done loads more to be honest um but you've got to know when to stop and with so many more bases currently out of stock and waiting to be dyed up um it's trying to find balance between stocking up on plenty and but then stopping and moving on to the next thing so um so yeah did i show let's just show you so i've got here i like these three together so i'll show you them together there you go. so we have dahlia rose hip and bog myrtle hiya do you want to be on the shed cast? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, want to put tea on. I would love you to put tea on, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make myself some eggs and I'll have egg and chips. <laughs> Keeping it real. <laughs> um, Dahlia, rose hip, and bog myrtle. I might have already said that, sorry. <laughs> I was hoping he might come on camera, but he won't. Uh, so, yeah, I love those three together. Right, where are we? More than anything, I hope he's fed the dogs. Oh yes, he did, didn't he? Because Ebony came through and uh, looks quite pleased with herself. So yeah, that'll be that. Uh, right, where's the lid for that? There it is. So that's the Rosedale four ply. Two boxes of it, although some of that has sold. So um, do check what's in stock. And then, oh, there's another two boxes to go yet. I'm, I'm gonna have to start hurrying up, aren't I? Um, so, Carlisle Fingering is next. Here we go, here we go. Check this out. So here's box one. Hope you can see that. I love this lovely fresh green, which is actually called fresh leaves, um, with these purples and kind of like these bluey colours. Um, I think that's the the contrast there is really nice, um, and with this kind of sage as well. 
uh, yeah, all of those together. Um, I'll just show you a couple of individual items. We have a wood pile, which is always popular. Um, and it's an absolute joy to die as well. Um, oh, I'll tell you what else we have. Hang on, I'm just putting stuff away. So these are a couple of skeins. I've brought two out because it's variegated. So hopefully showing you two, you can see the colours. A good colour representation. So this is Rainbow Bouquet. Um, it was the Cottage Unicorn. So a few years ago, I did a little mini series of colourways based, based on like mythical creatures. So there was the Cottage Unicorn, the Cottage Mermaid, and I can't remember what else. Um, and quite recently we had someone asking after Cottage Unicorn again. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me again, sorry. Um, and because I've been spending this year like revamping colours, um, conflating some of the colours even as well, um, maybe removing some um, and kind of like just totally going for a full refresh. I thought it would tie in nicely to give this a brand new name for 2023. Hence, the Cottage Unicorn will now be known as Rainbow Bouquet, um, which was Laura's idea for a name, and I think it's perfect for it. So yeah, I hope you can see that well. I'm so chuffed with how it came out. I, it might partly be the base as well. This, this base takes colours with a really nice kind of clarity, which I really love and um you get this kind of like gentle glow from it as well so even with the soft colors i don't know if if i'm explaining that all that well but anyway i just love it um so that is that box uh now carlo fingering is pure superwash extra fine merino uh i'll just put this box away so it's a single yarn, hence we don't call it four ply, because I can't really bring myself to call four ply yarns. Uh, I can't bring myself to call singles yarns four ply, because although they're the same thickness, they're not technically spun with four plies. Um, so it's a bit of a, maybe I'm being a bit pedantic and a bit technical there, but there we go. That's why we call the singles yarns uh, fingering, as in fingering weight. Um, it just means it's the same thickness as four ply so actually there's a couple of other yarns in this box as well so you'll have to well don't ignore them but sort of ignore them and um, here is box two i mean see what i mean about the glow i don't know i hope you can see that in those richer colors so we've got plum which is the dark purpley color wallflower brick faded bloom white iris um hydrangea is the pink um oh little owl which is brown with kind of it's a soft cool brown with some kind of gray shades oh and passion flower i must show you that passion flower is one of my properly speckled colorways check out those pink speckles i'm um, actually it's got black speckles as well but the pink ones are giving me life. <sighs> Love pink speckles. Um, but then the kind of like the base colours give it a little bit of a bit of shade. Um, kind of like dusky, moody. Just to balance it all, you know. So that's passion flower. Um, I'll just put that away in there. The other things that are in this um, box, I might as well show you. Uh, Brim and Four Ply in Rosewood, which is a gently variegated colourway. I've tried it the once, we really like it, um, although it's not 
actually sold yet so whether i'll repeat it or not i don't know we'll see i guess if i feel like it then i will do um and there's a skein of harbour as well and then there's just a couple of skeins of boland lace which is what i'm wearing um in stone they're from the same dye lot but one is a bit darker than the other um so that's a lovely kind of oatmeal shade nice and gentle um rustic woolly but this is it's really soft um i think the lace weight at the moment is the softest but of the boland yarns because we do boland lace boland four ply boland dk and boland aran actually the aran yeah aran and lace are probably the softest of that collection at the moment um i think it's just really because they're more loosely spun um so yeah like it looks woolly but it feels so soft and lovely um so those are the only two skeins of that yarn left it's so overdue an update um it's, it's on the to-do list um and they're probably in our reduced to clear section because they're older skeins as well so if you're interested do have a look um in the reduced to clear section we're using it just to try and keep things turning over really turning around um so things like when you've got like just two skeins left they're not hanging around for as long maybe um and that just sort of it allows us that space um and a little bit of cash to crack on and do new updates and yeah it's just the way it goes really so um oh that's this week oh god there's still more to tell you sorry um Liz Cork has re released a shawl pattern just today. I'll be honest, I can't remember the name because I haven't, I haven't yet read up on it. I've seen the pictures and it's, it's stunning. It uses mosaic knitting. Um, it uses curled fingering, which is our superwash merino linen uh, fingering weight slash four ply yarn in colours faded bloom and linen so um like a pinky red but not super rich oh i showed it you didn't i i've got it on um carlisle so this color with linen the colorway linen which is the softest most barely there cream um so the pattern shows off really well with those two colors together um i've just dyed batches of each of those on keld today um in case anyone wants the exact colors for the shawl um so they'll be available next week i need to get them dry um and processed and photographed so that's uh liz cork's new shawl um yeah <laughs> i need to i actually need to like read the email and everything about it um but do check it out it, the pictures will tell you everything you need to know i'm sure anyway because it's just gorgeous um someone really noisy walking past behind the garage um, there's a ginnel that goes along past behind the garage to the other houses gardens the back backs of them um so we get people walking past you might hear a dog bark in a minute um so what else this week um oh, there's a, a loop order in pro in progress um i'm still working on that hopefully get that finished on monday and shipped next week there's also i don't know if i'm allowed to tell you this i hope i am i won't say too much um something to do with the yorkshire yarn trail uh that's happened sorry maybe got a shopping trolley or something i don't know it's quite weird um yeah yorkshire yarn trail uh i've been doing something for that i won't say any more just in case um but that is september it's happening in september um, but there's facebook posts about it already so um do check out yorkshire yarn trail um we've I've already heard about shops that I hadn't heard about already on it. Like there's one in Helmsley. I didn't even know there was a yarn shop in Helmsley, you know, and I 
I live not that far away. Like I'm within an hour of Helmsley. So um, even if you're local and you've been uh, doing yarn stuff for quite a long time, chances are they will still highlight or feature um, a yarn shop that you didn't know was there. Um, so yeah, Yorkshire Yarn Trail. Um, I think that is it for this week. Whew, that was a lot, wasn't it? And I was just going to do like five or ten minutes. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, tired now. It's Friday night, uh, ready to go and chill out. I'm going to carry on with work, but I'm just going to do stuff on my laptop, um, like publishing this um, till probably about nine o'clock, and then I, I'm, I'll probably call it call it a day then. Um, we've got quite a busy weekend ahead. We're off to my mum and stepdad's tomorrow, so that'll be a long day out. Um, and then Sunday, I'm off for a lovely bike ride. It will be my longest bike ride ever yet, to date. Um, and it will involve stopping for cake um, with a friend. So very much looking forward to that. Um, uh, and then next week, I haven't even got that far other than getting Luke finished. We'll see what else the week brings us. But you know, I try to be organised, I try to plan, but honestly, there's just, there's a lot. And uh, sometimes you just kind of have to do it on the fly. <sighs> Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop there. You're probably sick to death of my voice. It's been well over 45 minutes now, which is a very long 10 minute video. Um, so I will catch you next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the comments and the orders and just the general loveliness. It is an absolute pleasure. So, um, yeah, really, really appreciated. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend and have a great week ahead. Bye.